We're going to title tonight's message, Living in Power with Jesus, Living with Power in Jesus. Well, I don't know how I worded it. Living in Power with Jesus. There we go. And tonight, I want to talk to you guys. We're going to talk gospel. We're going to talk reality of Christianity. We're going to talk the awesome empowerment that you have as a believer. You're going to think I'm being really intense, maybe harsh, but I'm not. I'm just being really diligent and determined that you hear truth and you guys get equipped and encouraged, okay? I'm prefacing all that because no matter what happens in life, we're solid in Christ, right? No matter what happens, who comes, who goes, we're in Christ, right? Amen? No matter what happens, Jesus is first. So, something to tell you guys. Those of you going to watch this. I am stepping down from young adult pastor. I'm stepping down from pastoring at Harvest Time Church entirely. And my wife and I, we're moving to Minnesota. So I pre- I, I'm, I'm saying that now so I don't have to preach half a sermon and then pull that out and then and preach more. We're gonna get that out of the way first. That's just uncomfortable. Um, I, we have to have a new assignment. The Lord's moving. We have a new assignment. Um, we have some great leaders that are gonna take care of you guys. Awesome leaders who are so mature in the faith, much older than me, much wiser. They have more. <laughs> um, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. And you guys are gonna be rocked. And you are going to get so messed up for Jesus. That's all that matters, right? Who cares if I'm here? Who cares if I'm a good speaker or if I got the light on me? All that matters is that you guys know Christ and show Christ, right? People come and go. New assignments. I know it's hard. People can leave. and There's relationships there. There's friendships. There's brotherhoods. There's walking alongside each other. And I understand those things. I'm not belittling them. I'm just saying there's a way bigger plan happening than just this. There's a way bigger ministry going on than just this. I was about to come as a shock to some of you guys, and it's funny, one of our skinniest nights, I announced this, so everyone else is just going to see it on the, on the video later, or <laughs> come next week, I have no idea what's going on, I might have to share it again, that's just going to be awkward again, because like half of you are going to be in the know, <laughs> um, but I wanted to share that with you guys, and I encourage that you're going to be left in good hands, that God is faithful and God is good, and he's equipping his church to be the church, and I've had such a pleasure pastoring you guys, working with you guys know those of you who were here a couple years ago working with James and just ministering alongside him. We've been, I've been ministering during, through COVID with the Harvest Time staff. It's just been a pleasure to minister with you guys and teach y'all and encourage y'all and equip you guys. Literally, it really has. It's been one of the greater pleasures of my life. I know I'm young, so I have many more to experience, but up until now, it's been one of the best. <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for allowing me to, to be your pastor at, for as long as you have as well. All right, enough of the, enough of the sadness. You're ready to get rocked. You're ready for Jesus to kick you and then love you, but not kick you in it hurt, but kick you in it make you more like him. Because when Jesus kicks us, we don't, we don't get wounded. We just get strengthened, you know? Because the Holy Spirit is going to smack us. Okay, living in power with Jesus. I'm not really sure how to ever step down from something on, on live, so this is kind of, I'm uncomfortable right now. So I'm just gonna, I got out of the way, and we're going to move on. It didn't happen. Um, when you become a Christian, guys, you re- receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you believe in Christ, you are given eternal life. You're given a step into the Father, the, the, the household of God. You know, in, in Ephesians, it says, it says you have been made, in, in chapter 2, I think, some, uh, maybe verse 5, it says you have been now a part of the household of God. It says that, that is founded upon the apostles, the prophets, and even Christ Jesus being the cornerstone. You are in the household of God now, sealed with the Holy Spirit. So where do you live? Where do you reside? Household of God. Scripture says you you dwell in heavenly places. It says that he's preparing a place for you for where he goes. Okay, so the precedence right there as a Christian is what? We have intimacy with God. We're in the family, right? The precedence right away is that we're intimate with the family of God. Just like me stepping down... Guys, we're a family here. Household of God. You guys have my number or face, whatever. Like, things don't end. And then if we don't talk for a while, guess what happens if you die and I die? Where do we see each other? We're moving in together. Into the household of God, yeah. I said, Sunday, if you don't like me now, you better like me then, because we're going to be neighbors. 
Seriously, though, we, 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 are, we are allowed to live in the household of God when we become Christians. When we become Christians... We're no longer slaves to the law of sin and death. And I have references for what I'm saying here, so don't think I'm just, I'm just making things up. If you guys want to turn to Romans 4, uh, if you have your Bible with you. Romans 4, verse 7 through 8. It's quoted in the Old Testament. It says, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count sin. So, as a Christian, what are we judged by? We are judged by the blood of Jesus, Right? We're judged by the grace of God on our lives. So before you come to Christian, we're going to do a simple gospel. You're like, I mean, like 101. If you're not saved tonight, you're about to be. Jesus came and died for our sins, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay? That's why God came. That's how we live forever. Now, blessed are those whose law of this deeds are forgiven. That are those who have believed in Jesus. So, those who believe in Jesus are blessed because of why? Their lawless deeds are forgiven, and their sins are covered. And this is the man against whom the Lord will not count sin. He does not count sin against Christians. He recognizes it, like God, God's not just turning a blind eye to sin. If I kill someone, or if I slander someone tonight, I have those examples there, kill someone and gossip, really extreme right there. If I were to do any of those things still tonight, God recognized that, and he calls me to be accountable for that, and that I need to confess that and repent. But he no longer says, you're guilty of death and punishment because of that. Because you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Now, before I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, what happens when I sin? I mean, like any person without Christ, you fall under the condemnation, under the judgment. John 3 says that in 17 and 18. It says, those who haven't believed are condemned already. That means a judgment of guilty has already been given to them until they believe. But as Christians, we're not given that. What are we given? Colossians 1, what are we given? How does God look at us? It's about to hop around scripture tonight because I want to make sure you know what I'm saying is biblical. Not just my words, but God's words. And you who were once alienated, were once alienated, means you were orphaned, you were um, estranged to God, but you no longer are. I'm saying you once were. That means I'm implying you no longer are. You were hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. He has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast. So if we continue to the end, believing in Jesus, loving the Lord, how does it say God sees us? blameless, holy, and above reproach. That's how he's going to present us on the day of judgment to the Father. That's how we're presented to the Father right now in the Spirit. I mean, literally, you have right standing with God. You guys, if we're Christians in this room, all of us right now, we have right standing with God Almighty. You have good standing with him. Like, it's okay. Like, it's like if your dad liked you. Your dad loved you and was like, hey, you can be with me. Like, we're cool. I know you did all these bad things, but you've accepted my grace and my forgiveness, come be with me. I'm going to make you uncomfortable because you're like, ah, I might be living in sin. Well, we'll we'll address that. But as Christians, as those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that he died and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins, he did this so that he could present us to the Father as blameless, holy, and above reproach. It's scripture. It's not just good teaching. It is the word of God. Who, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how often do we struggle with seeing ourselves as forgiven? Come on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's start confessing right now. It's a struggle for us. What do we do? Oh, man, this is like old school. This is like, this is like real, real first base gospel. What do we do? We go, Lord, you love me for my deeds, right? We do this in spirit. We don't, we don't know we're doing it, but we do it passively. We go, man, I, I serve, I pray, I read my Bible. I'm doing awesome. The Lord must be really happy with me. We feel really holy. We feel like we're doing good. All of a sudden we sin, whether it be uh, substances, whether it be lust, anger, gossip, whatever our struggle is, we, we, we sin and then we fall into this place of like, ah, somehow I was good before. I'm no longer good right now until I repent enough and then I can be good again, right? 
We go take some dirt and we shove it in our face till we feel bad enough to where God can forgive us. We go, Lord, let me hold on to some judgment just long enough until you know that I'm really sorry and then you're really gonna forgive me. He's like, well, I wish you would believe in my son's blood and I already know you're really forgiven. Because you know when he died, he didn't just forgive your sins immediately. He forgave your sins past, present, and future. Past, present, and future. He already knows what you're going to commit in, the, in, in 10 days if you sin. 100 days, 10 years, 100 years. None of us will be here in 100 years, but Lord, I mean, I don't know. Bless you if you are. That would be awesome. But he already knows what's going to happen. Yet his grace on the cross, he chose to understand that, know it, still die for you, still love you, move into a relationship with you, and then bring you into the household of God, correct? Yeah, Pastor West, that's awesome. All right, yeah. So, let's jump around again. We're going to go to Galatians 2. Galatians 2, verse 20, 21. This is what literally I was just talking about. We justify, as humans, we justify ourselves by our actions, right? It's a typical thing. It's a normal thing. Any religion, Buddhism, Hinduism, Mormonism, anything, they have a, they have a pseudo understanding of maybe God and grace, even the Christian sects that are not Christian, they, they, they go, yeah, yeah, Jesus is Lord, but, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't really God, you can be just like him. Like, they, they start to, to, to mess with the Christology, which is your theology of Christ, how you view Christ. They mess with that. They take him from Lord and they bring him down to some sort of demigod. Or you have other religions who are like, yeah, I mean, as long as you're holy enough and you do enough, you're going to be rewarded enough. The only problem with that is there has to still be a God. There has to still be one singular God with one singular moral code and judge, judgment. Because who's going to say if you're doing good or not? Who's going to say if you were good enough? Who's going to say if you weren't good enough? See, the human nature is to live based on actions, where the kingdom nature is to live based on the Holy Spirit in Christ. If you guys have been under my teaching at all, you have heard me quote Galatians 5, fruit of the Spirit, a lot. We are given the Holy Spirit as a helper so that we can live in holiness. Paul even says, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. And he's saying here, man, if we were able to get holy through the old Jewish law, through the old commandments, if we were able to actually achieve right standing with God, then Christ died for absolutely no reason. Your belief in a free gift of grace is ridiculous. It's crazy. But you, that's not the case. Because righteousness comes through faith. We are saved by faith through grace, Scripture says. So that means we're justified by what? The blood of Jesus. Guys, being a Christian is literally the best thing that you can ever be. <laughs> Just gonna throw it out there flat. Being a Christian is A plus, top of the class, because you're a son and daughter of God. I know we get caught up, man, we get caught up in so much stuff, school, work, what we're gonna do for the rest of our lives. I mean, I feel like, at least for myself sometimes, the thought about what tomorrow could bring or the next day or the next week seems to take up space and time it shouldn't. I'm worried about four months from now. I don't know why. You know, that could happen to us. I'm, what am I going to do when I'm 35? Well, I'm, I, I don't know. I hope I make it that long. Like, we worry about all these thoughts that are so just temporary. We get worried, we get stressed, we get anxious. Those are natural things that happen to us as humans. We're not om om omniscient. We don't know everything, right? I hope you don't. You shouldn't. Like, we don't know everything. You know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know what's going to happen tomorrow. You have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. So we worry about this. There's a natural angst that comes up in us. of so like, huh, uncertainty. I don't know about that. I don't like that. When Scripture says, do not worry, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and petition, make your request known to God. He understands it's going to be a natural response. He's going to understand your natural state of a human, that you're going to want to earn things. You're going to want to be holy by the law. You're going to want to plan out as best you can. You're going to want to structure your life in the best way possible. But God always has a different plan. He has a different plan for your life probably than you have for your life. And he has a different plan for how you become holy. 
Your actions of holiness, your, your, your thought process of how you can make God happy, it's probably through serving, reading the Bible, knowing more scripture. It's doing a lot of things, but all Christ wants you to do is become who he paid for you to become. That's what he wants. He, man, I, I, I really believe this. I don't think God cares so much about what you do for a job rather than who you are and the job you do. If God cares about what job you do, he will tell you. He will let you know. He's big. He's the guy who's been letting people know what's going on since day one. Okay? He doesn't necessarily care about what you're doing, more who you are while doing it. I'm kind of jumping around in all these scriptures just to show you, first off, that, guys, we belong to God. And second off, we belong to God because of the grace and the salvation of Jesus. Things are way more simple than we give them credit for. Things are way more simple than we even know what to do with. It almost irritates us how simple they are. Romans 5.1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, done. That's all you need to know. You want to know how God sees you? As a son of God, you have peace with God. I've never had peace with somebody I don't like. I've never had peace with somebody I don't love. Scripture literally says, every single, I'm going to point every single one of you, you have peace with God, you have peace with God, you do too, so do you, you two back there, you, 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 you have peace with God if you're a Christian. You have peace with God right now. What's that even mean? What's that even look like? You have peace with God. That means his judgment, his anger isn't coming upon you. John 3, 18, where it says, those who don't believe are already under the judgment. That's not you. You're John 3, 16. Eternal life. You have peace with God, guys. I'm just going to keep saying that. You have peace with God. Why be anxious about tomorrow? Why be worried about tomorrow? Why be worried about what God thinks about you? You already know. You have peace with him. He's for you. He loves you. He's a good, good father, Scripture says. When you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a stone or a snake. I know you two are parents. You love your children, right? You have great thoughts for your children. You have great... Some, most of the times, you know, like, you love them. The best you could ever love your child is like the first block on how God starts to love us. I want you guys to catch with me if you're not catching where we're going tonight. We're literally, I'm just going to repeat a bunch of things about that you're free in Christ, you have peace with God, and your salvation isn't earned. I think we need to remember that. Because we get caught up in the world. We get caught, well, I've been in church in eight weeks. Oh, I've been in church in two weeks. Oh, gosh. Lord, how are you looking at me? Like almost somehow we have, we have a, a manager who's walk, watching our punch card as we come into the sanctuary. God's like, yes. Yes, I can give them more because I came and sat in the chair. Yes, I can give them more because I read the Bible. Guys, the Pharisees and the scribes knew the scriptures, were at the temple, were pretty much like the pastors of the day. And those are the ones that God rebuked of being unholy. The holy ones are those who believe Jesus. Romans 8, 1, come on. If you're, gonna remember any, if you're gonna memorize anything, memorize Romans 5, 1, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ from the law of sin and death. What else do we need to know? To live holiness. We've been given the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, upon salvation. Now in Romans it says, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. You will not be condemned by God. Let that one click really hard. You will not be condemned. At all. Any bit. Any little bit. Nothing. You are a son and daughter of God. You will not be condemned by him. At all. Not even for like a moment of like, ah, well, you really do deserve to be condemned for a little bit, so I'm going to make you feel bad, and then I'm going to love you. Nope, nothing. It says he casts our sin as far from the east as from the west. Who here wants a better revelation of how God sees them? I do. I need one. I need one. I, you guys might think I'm intense and I'm crazy, and that's okay. I just really want you to, ah, oh, I want you to live so free. So free. 
And you can stumble and know he's not there yelling at you because you fell, but he's there helping you back up because he's your dad. Like, oh, if we just get that. If we just get that we're sons and daughters, if we just get that he's our father. When I go to work, don't get me wrong, pastors, we're not always the nicest to each other, okay? This isn't like a holy party where everyone's just floating around just quoting scripture and just zooming around. Real people, real life issues, real stuff. Kids getting dealt with with the system, with the COVID thing going on. Our schedules like people are tense. I get irritated sometimes. Things happen that shouldn't happen. But what if I just walked in a full identity and revelation that I'm free in Christ? Literally. That I'm free in Christ. That I've been freed from the law of sin and death. So that means, here we go. Do you guys know how the law works? You guys know how, you speed, what happens to you if you speed and get caught? I'll say it that way. If you speed and get caught, what happens? Ticket? You get a ticket, right? You get something? You at least get a hard time? That's the law. You break a law, you're dealt with with a punishment, right? You get caught selling drugs, what happens? You probably go to jail. You get caught murdering someone, what happens? You go to jail. You commit a sin, there is a judgment and a condemnation that comes with that. Scripture says in Romans 8, let's get rocked here, okay? Let's get rocked. For the law of spirit of life has set you free in Christ from the law of sin and death. What happened to Adam and Eve in the garden? You better get rocked. What happened to, I'm about to get rocked too. What happened to Adam and Eve in the garden? They sinned, right? What was their punishment? Death. A physical death and a spiritual death. This talking about a spiritual death and a physical death. Because in John 3, 16, what happens when you believe in Jesus? Eternal life. When you believe in Jesus, you get eternal life. Does it say if you believe in Jesus but never sin again, you get eternal life? No. It says if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. Adam and Eve sinned. They reaped death, both spiritually and physically, into the body of man. Okay. I've now been freed from the law of sin and death. So what that means is if I sin, no longer must I die eternally. But there's a grace that covers that sin and repentance that gives me life eternally. Are you guys clicking with that? That makes sense? John 3, 16, eternal life. Genesis 2, 3. I don't know, I'm just trying my little action. Here we go. Genesis 2 and 3, sin, death. John 3, 16, belief, life. Romans 8, 1, freed from the law of what? Sin and death. So now, what does it say? The, what, what law has freed you? The spirit of life. So literally, in Jesus, when we sin and we repent and we come to the Father and we recognize who he is, no longer do we reap death for our sin, but we reap grace by conviction and repentance into what? Eternal life. Is this making sense? Why isn't this preached more? Why don't we talk about this more? Why do we talk so much about how bad we are? Guys, God knows how bad you are. Trust me, that's why he died for you. Okay? He knew you couldn't get there. He knew you could not make it. He had to die for you. Scripture says, while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. So do you guys think if he knew you were a sinner, he still died for you? That he loved you? Even, even here, uh, uh, Romans, Romans 8, verse 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. What do we see in Genesis? They lived according to the flesh. What did they reap? Death. But by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, or daughters. Okay, it's all inclusive. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Guys, come on. We need some Christians to stand up and be bold in some faith. I don't care how long it takes you to get there, man. You got to believe God for what he says about you. I don't care if you don't know what your spiritual gift is, if you're insecure about your ability to do X, Y, and Z, if you hate your job, if you don't like your family. There might be a myriad of things that are going through your head that go through your life every single day. The one thing I pray for you guys always is that you would just know how God sees you because it will literally change everything. If you know how God sees you, then you know how God sees her. And if you know how God sees her, then you know how God sees him. 
And it all starts from knowing how God sees you. Because once you know how he sees you, you know how he sees his children. You're able to know who he is and how he is. I don't even know. I, I got so convicted the other day, and I repent for this to the Lord. I spent so much of my time pastoring and in ministry, telling the church how bad they are, telling the church you need to shape up and get better. Immature. Immature reasoning and understanding is correction without encouragement. Because all they want you to do is be better instead of, I mean, do better instead of be better. So much of my ministry walk, I've wanted people to just do the right thing. Now all I care about is that you become the right thing. God will take care of your sin. You will get convicted. You will get rebuked. I don't want to be in your shoes if that happens. You stand before the Lord, Romans 14. Everyone stands and gives account by themselves. You will answer to God for your actions. But man, I want you to know you are a son and a daughter, church. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do every good work he's put before you. There is nothing that you cannot do with God. That he looks at you and he goes, I have peace with you no matter what you do because you are my son and you are my daughter. I have peace with you. What if that's what you woke up with every day? What if you woke up knowing that you had right standing with God? Your actions would follow then, right? We said in Romans... Or Galatians, I don't know, I flew through so many passages just now. We just read, yeah, Galatians, that you cannot earn grace, right? Paul said, it is not by the law that any man is justified, lest Christ died for no reason. Okay, we're going to break this down. So if you're, if you're not justified by what you do, what are you justified by? Jesus. Okay, well, if you can't earn it, then it looks like you can't do enough good things to become a good person, Right? It looks like you can't be holy enough to become holy enough, right? It looks like you have to believe God is who he is so he can make you who he says you can be, and then in that way you please him, right? Okay, so simply, what's the answer? Say it by grace through faith. Believe the Lord. You can't earn it, man. You're so loved by the Lord. You're so loved by the Lord. Oh, my gosh, you have right standing with God. What if I just kept saying this all night? You'd probably get mad at me. What if I just said it until you believed it? Until I believed it? We walk in freedom in the Holy Spirit. I go to work or I get upset at my wife. We don't, we don't always agree on things. Well, yeah, crazy. Well, I'm not perfect, okay? I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, we don't always agree on things. But what I can agree on is that Christ is the empowerment in me to be like him. This is that gospel that changes your life. All right, this isn't no ticket to heaven gospel. You're going to heaven, you believe in Jesus, you're going to heaven, sure, cool. But you, you have to live a life first. You have to live a life. You have to do things. Young people, we have to grow old. As you grow old and I grow even younger, these things will happen to us where we're tested and we're challenged by the world. Yeah? You've already experienced that. College, loans. Police, if you've done bad things. Parents, if they discipline you because you're a bad child like me. Jobs, finding people you, you like, someone you want to marry, thinking about kids, thinking about where you're moving to after school. You've already started experience real life things, paying taxes. That was like the biggest smack to the face, come on. You're like, wow, you mean I don't get to live like I was raised up forever? I have to actually earn my stuff and then pay a lot of it to the government? Parents are like, yeah, thanks for wasting all my money. Bless you. His life hits you in the face. But what if, what if when we got hit in the face, it didn't ruin who we were? What if when we got caught right in the chin, like a big boy or a big girl, and life punched you, you literally said, I am a son of God, and I have right standing with the Father. There's peace between me and God. There's no more enmity. There's no more wall of hostility, as Paul says. But I have peace with God. Why does that not cover everything? Why do I let my relationships, my work, my life dictate how I act? I don't get it. Doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't make any sense. We gotta believe this stuff. 
We have to believe this. Everything hinges on this. Because you're the next generation. We're the next generation to come up and to be old, okay? <laughs> we're gonna be old one day or we're gonna be leading the church. We're gonna be Christians who are mature and teachers. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're a linesman. I don't care if uh, you're a barista. I don't care if you work at Little Caesars. Whatever you do, you're gonna grow old and you need to grow old in your faith and mature in your faith so you can be disciplined in discipling others. God doesn't really care what you do, but who you are while you're doing it. Because we're going to be old one day. People are going to be sitting in those chairs looking at us in life. People are going to be walking into those stores that we're hiring, looking up to us in life. We're not there yet. Well, four of you are. But the rest of us aren't there yet. Because I want us to be a generation that people look at and they're like, this generation has believed like no one else ever has. That's no one's ever been able to shake a stick on the foundation they stand on. No matter what comes, no matter what political policy is put in place, no matter what happens with marriage rights or women's rights or civil rights or global rights or hunger rights or all these things, no matter what happens, they know this is a generation that stands on the fact that God is for them and they have peace with him. Guys, we're going to heaven. I want to be known for how I believe Jesus. I don't care if I get up there and Abraham's like, whoa, man, awesome job. I'm like, where's my, where's my Lord? Where's my God? <laughs> I, want, I want that from him. Abraham, bless you, you know? But I'm answering to the Lord for being a good and faithful servant, for believing what he said, letting it empower me, guys. I do not subscribe to this gospel. I'm about to start poking some flipping over some stones here. I do not subscribe to the gospel that you are a sinner still and you are stuck in your sin. I don't subscribe. Bible does not say that. Bible says you can be that, but it does not say you have to be that. Literally, I just read that you would not take on a yoke of slavery again. I just read that. That means his hope is don't take on slavery of sin again once you've been freed. You don't have to be a slave to sin. You want to act on an impulse? Guess what? You don't have to do it. Before, what do we read? You were under the law of sin and death. First off, you had to sin because you weren't in God's fold. And second off, you were bound to reap death. But now you've been freed from that into the law of life, by the spirit of life. So now what? You're able to, first off, not reap death if you sin. And second off, sin has no more power over you. I want to tell each one of you guys that. Sin has no power over you in Christ. And man, you're going to have everyone under the sun tell you it's a hard road and a rough road and they're going to discourage you. And guess what? It is hard and it is rough. But I'm victorious. I'm in Christ. Like, I might offend some people here, but that's okay. Okay, because Christ loves you. But just because life is hard and temptation is hard does not justify us acting anything other than Christ. You may think that's impossible. I can tell you it's possible. Not because I've done it, but because Scripture says I can do it. Guys, pretty much the thing is, like, this is all I ever care to preach on. Honestly, teaching exegetical for me and book by book and passage by passage is really hard for me. Because all I want to do is talk about who, what we believe about God, because that's all that matters. Our theology is all that matters. How we see God, how we believe, what, what we believe about him. If it does line up with the book, it's got to get tossed. If it doesn't line up with Scripture, it has to get tossed. But Scripture says I have peace with God. Okay, you have peace with God. So what's that mean? You have peace with God. What's having peace with God mean? It means you have peace with God. So you have peace with God, and that means you have peace with God. When you have peace with God, what do you have with God? Peace. <laughs> that means no hostility. There's no condemnation. I just read there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What if you looked at God and you were happy? What if you thought about God and it was a good thought? What if you thought about Jesus and it was like, wow, he loves me so much. I'm so loved by him. Thank you, I love you. Instead of like thinking about Jesus, we're like, oh, I sinned. I'm, so, I'm not good enough. I'm not perfect. Yes, those are all true. It's why I had to die for you. But now I want to live in a place of progression, moving into maturity with the faith. I don't discourage any Christian who's ever come before me or any Christian who will ever come after me. What I am saying is the Christians I'm with now, I want to tell you that you do not have to live bound to sin. You can't live free to Jesus. You do not have to give into the impulses of your flesh. You can give into the impulses of the Spirit. 
You do not have to think God hates you or God wants to condemn you. You can think as a son or daughter of God, God loves me, God has the best for me, and God has peace with me. Not because I say so, but because Scripture does. And I'm not preaching prosperity, and I'm not preaching yippee-doo, God's going to give me everything I want to do. I'm preaching doctrine, correct theology, that you have peace with God, you are found favorable in his sight. Like I said, you might think I'm mad and angry when I started this out. I'm not. I'm just really passionate. This is something I struggle with too. As soon as I sin, man, I go through this valley sometimes. This coaster of like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, man. I got to repent for at least 12 minutes. And then I'll be holy again. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so loved. Oh, I'm so loved. I sin. Oh, I don't know if I'm loved. I repented enough. Oh, I'm so loved. I sin. Oh, what am I doing right there? I'm earning my, my love. I'm earning my righteousness state. I'm earning my peace with God because I'm telling him when I'm not enough and then I'm telling him when I am enough. So I'm literally working my way back into his grace, which is a lie and impossible because Paul says it's not by the flesh or by the law, lest any man should boast. So... If you think you are holy enough because of how much you repent or how hard you repent or how bad you feel, you're wrong. You're only holy. You're only righteous. You only have peace with God by believing in Jesus Christ. Are you guys clicking? Is this making sense? This is making sense. I mean, this is the gospel. We got a foundation on this. This is the foundation. This is what everything else grows on. If this isn't our foundation, we got a crooked building. Leading Tower of Pisa, Leading Tower of Christians over here, not knowing what we believe, what we stand on. We stand on, if tonight, if you've never done it, if tonight you've never done it, you'd make tonight the night where you go, Lord Jesus, I know you died for my sins, I know I'm covered by your blood, I believe you rose, I believe you reign, and I believe I have peace with you now through your salvation, help me remember that, I'm laying a new foundation, I'm scrapping the old and I'm walking out as a babe again. Let's do this, Lord. Take me through some spiritual rehab, because I really need to know who you are. I asked the Lord to do that to me this summer. I said, Father, take me through some rehab because I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I got some bruises. I need some rehab here. I said, Lord, I don't know if I told you guys this. I'm with God. I'm in my bedroom. And I'm with him. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to pray. I don't want to come to you. I feel so uncomfortable right now. I wouldn't do that with my friend. Why? I know I had peace with my friend, but I forgot I had peace with God. So I began to look at my sin instead of me being a son. I began to redefine what God already defined. I began to become unworthy again when he already called me worthy. I said, Lord, I know I need it. Oh, God, I know I need it. Take me through rehab, Father, but be gentle, please. He said, yeah, done. Done. God worked in my heart, and he changed me this summer. He changed me this season. As Scripture says, we all struggle in many ways, but let it not be said of us that we struggle in who God is and our identity in Christ. Please, dear God, let that not be what's said of us as a generation. As I said in the beginning, some of you guys walked in a little bit late. I'll say it again. Uh, I'm stepping down as young adult pastor and pastoring at Harvest Time Church. And you guys will be in some really good hands. And my last, um, October will be my last month here. I don't think I said it the first time. October will be my last month here. Because I want you to not don't, don't not don't care almost, just focus on Christ, just focus on making this your truth, not the whole your your truth is your truth, but make this the truth. Ephesians two guys, Galatians two, Colossians one, Romans four, five, and eight. Everything I just read about you having peace with God, you being forgiven of your sins, you having right standing with the Father. It's all that matters, literally. But all we try to do is we, we, we try to do better to be better. We try to not do things so that we can be holy. It says Abraham was justified by his faith, right? He was kind of righteous by his faith, not by what he did. But it was his faith that impacted what he did. So what he did were righteous things because he believed a righteous God. I want to let you know right now that no one's ever told you this, guys. Your sins are forgiven. You believe Jesus is Lord and Savior of your life. Your sins are forgiven. Everything you've done, everything you did today, everything you owe to, your sins are forgiven. And it says, as a son or daughter, you have peace with God. The only person who's not living at peace with God, even though he has peace with you, is you. 
God says, I've laid a table before your enemies, yet we don't want to sit and eat. God says, I, I, you have peace with me. Come into my throne room. Yet we refuse to open the door. The only one who's not owning up to the <laughs> end of the blessing is us. And guess who the blessing's for? Us. It's our privilege and our blessing to be able to know God. And he chooses it to make it his blessing to know us. Guys, God's already on your side. God's already for you as a son or daughter. So let's just let him love us. Let him love you. Old, older, older, young. I said, yeah, I said old, I was like older. Gotta watch that one. Let God love you. Let him love you. Let it happen. Go home tonight. I do this now. I sit and I just go, Lord, I'm just gonna rest in your love for me right now. Whenever I feel myself getting anxious, Lord, I'm gonna remind myself that you love me. Guys, be like a child. I'm not saying weirdly, but it's just like simply, sim- simply. Just be like a child. Hey, Dad, I'm struggling. All right, so let's talk it out. Cool, thank you. We make this so complicated, and we get all this religion involved, and we get all these things. You gotta touch the water, have the communion. You gotta come in at a certain time, leave at a certain time, come to X amount of prayer groups, X amount of Bible studies, have to at least pray these certain prayers a couple times a day, have this many folks. I mean, gosh, there's so many ways to be holy, but Scripture gives us one. And it says, just believe that I love you, man. Believe that I love you and that you're forgiven. Yeah, believe. That's our freaking motto. Believe. Older and younger, you're going to be challenged this week. You're going to be challenged tonight. You're even challenged right now. Believe that God loves you. You guys cool with that? You guys ready to rock with that? I mean, that's what we need as Christians, right? To believe that God loves us. To believe that he's for us. To believe that his mercies are new every day. And I'm just saying scriptures. I'm not, I'm not making things up. Guys, I'm not, I'm not even upset with you. I'm just so passionate that you would believe this. Even here, right here. You open the book up to anywhere and it's just good. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Man, just do that. When things are hard, just rejoice in God. When things are easy, rejoice in God. When things are good, rejoice in God. Man. God is for you guys. He loves you and he's forgiven you. You're saved. You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. God is for you. God is for you because you are a son and daughter. He's for the whole world because he says he wishes that none would perish. But now as a son of God, you can know you're not going to perish. Amen? It don't get better than that. It, there's literally nothing that, be- that tops that. I don't care what job you do, how much money you make, what ministry you have, how many times you told someone about Jesus. What matters in that day is what you believed. You're a son or daughter, man. If you believe that Jesus is Lord, you're forgiven. Don't let anyone take that from you. Don't let people who have been burned by the church take that from you. Don't let people who have been burned by this life take that from you. At all times, under any circumstance, if you are a son and daughter of God, God is always at peace with you. God is always for you. Don't let anyone take that. Not even yourself, your stupid mind that tries to steal your freedom by the thoughts and the rationale of this world and why you think you should be guilty enough to not be loved. Well, I'm sorry, last time I checked, you weren't on the judgment seat of all creation. You don't even know what it is to be right and wrong. What you should know is that you're loved. God loves you, he wants to save you from sin, save you from hell. He wants to save you from fall and corruption. He wants to bring you in life with him so you can live in eternity with him. Starting now. Not waiting to be holy when we get to heaven, but now. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh. Literally, man. It don't get better than that. You guys are Christians. I'm looking at a room of people who have peace with the almighty creator. That's a privilege for me. I'm looking at people who know God. 
I'm looking at people that God says, yeah, Wes, I have peace with them. I'm looking at royalty of the earth. That angels wish they were you. I'm looking at royalty of all creation right in front of me. All of you. And you're not royalty in my sight or because of my sight. You're royalty because of the Father has chosen to make you that. That's a privilege for me. I get to look at people who are inheritors of the heavens, the kingdom. I look at you guys and you guys are co-inheritors of Christ. I'm not just talking to guys and girls. I gotta be careful because I'm talking to sons and daughters of God. Look around, guys. Sons and daughters of God. We might look like a ragtag bunch of people sometimes, but man, the king of angel armies is on my side, amen? Let's stop living defeated and let's start living in the promise. Let's stop living like the old man still alive. I need to hear this too. Let's start living like the new man really is alive. When scripture says the old is gone and the new has come, let's really start believing the new has come. It has come. And that's awesome. I don't even think we understand. Ah, I say all this and then I'm gonna go home and be like, Lord, I don't even understand you. I'm gonna go pray and be like, Father, help me to know that you love me. But I can tell you there is a place where you can live here instead of having to keep coming back. Every time you sin, every time you mess up, there's a place where you can live where you do have the mindset of Christ. You do have the understanding of the gospels, the impact in your life, and you can live it out maturely and in a way that is admired by the Father because you believe him. No matter how old you are, if you believe, then you can receive, man. All right, guys? Tonight was intense. A lot going at you, I know. I told you I was stepping down, and then I just hammered like really intense gospel truth at you. But like, what's, what else is there to teach on? What else matters? You die. What else matters? If you knew the Hebrew of Malachi, no. If you knew the grace and the saving grace of Jesus Christ through God our Father, right? I'm going to end with this, and we're going to wrap up. John 3.16, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because we, we need to read this stuff. We need to keep reading this stuff all the time. You can't ever get enough truth, guys. You can't ever get enough gospel. You can't ever get enough of what God has for you. You can't ever get enough of Jesus. Man, come on, amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and the people love the darkness rather than the, than the light because of their evil works. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen his works have been carried out by God. Guys, let's have eternal life and let's have our works carried out by God, amen? Have you guys even read that ever? I mean, like, these are verses that we don't even think about reading. Where's that John 3.16? Woo! What about 3.17 and 3.18? We're talking about, like, condemnation and judgment if we don't believe. I want to challenge you guys to get in the book. I challenge you last week, actually, to read Ephesians. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands who's done it. But I want you to do it. Read Ephesians. You've got to get stomped out by the Lord up there. You read Ephesians, man, he's going to mess you up. He's going to let you know you're a son or daughter right standing before him, saved by faith, to walk in love. He's going to nail you in men. He's going to nail you about how to love your wives and women. He's going to nail you how to love your husbands. You get in Ephesians, you ain't going to come out the same. You're really going to come out a daughter or a son who believes he is, who he is, she is, who she is. All right, Scripture ain't just here to like meander with and dust off every now and then when we're feeling holy. Scripture is a lamp unto our feet. So if I got the light off, how do I know where I'm walking? If I don't use the words, lamp until my feet got the light off, how I know where I'm walking. Well, by the grace of God, I, I hope this, that I walk in the light always. Just as I hope you guys walk in the light always. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these people.